if success is really this simple, if you could go from being where I was years ago, broke in every sense of the word, emotionally broke, physically broke, socially broke, and financially broke, to wealthy in all those areas, meeting my dreams, becoming a millionaire in less than 12 months, if that's really possible, if it's really as simple as using your personal power and being flexible in your approach and modeling the most successful people, if it's really that simple, how come everybody doesn't do this? That's a good question. A lot of things in life are really simple, but people don't apply them because they get caught up in day-to-day -day stuff like, well, you know, i got to pay my bills. They get caught up in making that living instead of designing the life. And they come to the end of their life and find out they lived only one-tenth of it. Not because they weren't intelligent, simply because they didn't get clear about what they wanted. They didn't get themselves to consistently take action and develop that decision-making, massive action muscle in their emotional body. They didn't vary their behaviors, and now they're stuck. It's not a place I think you want to be. Otherwise, you wouldn't have invested in this program, and you wouldn't be taking the time to listen now. I want you to know, not only are you learning how to take control of your own life, but one of my outcomes, obviously, is for you to learn to help other people to make changes as well. Family members, friends, people you care about, business associates, I don't care who. But see, once you learn how to take control of your own life, out of your energy and power and enthusiasm, you won't be able to help but go work with other people and help them to change. You'll see them not doing something, you pull them aside and say, look, the only reason you're not doing this is because you'd link too much pain to it. But let me ask you a question. If you don't do it, how painful will it be? And you'll be able to come in and say, look, let's just change what you link to this. And you're going to have a whole series of ways of doing this by the time this program is over. You're going to get good at this stuff. If you want to succeed in your life, remember this phrase, the past does not equal the future. Because you failed yesterday or all day today or a moment ago or for the last six months or for the last 16 years, the last 50 years of life doesn't mean anything. All that matters is what are you going to do right now? Hi, I'm Tony Robbins and I want to welcome you here to Personal Power, 30 Days to a Totally New Life. I'm here to tell you that today you're beginning something that can truly change the quality of your life forever. I'm speaking from experience. I've had the privilege of working with hundreds of thousands of people and studying what is the cutting edge that makes the difference in the quality of life. And I want you to know that I'm absolutely committed in these 30 days to making sure you get measurable results from this program. All that's required is two things. Number one, the desire on your part, and number two, the commitment to follow through and do this program each day, and then to follow through on the exercise you're given, as simple or as complicated as it may seem in the moment. If you'll do that, the things that you used to call dreams will become part of your daily reality. And again, I'm speaking from experience. The experience I'm speaking from is not only helping other people to change, but making changes in my own life. How come you can have two different people who seem to be so radically different in their abilities? One seems to have superior ability, superior talent, superior skill, superior education, and yet at the same time they don't produce the quality of life they want. While someone else who seems to have every disadvantage, they don't have the support emotionally, they don't have the family support, they don't have the education, they don't have the background, and yet they go out and they produce results way beyond what anyone could expect. The difference in the quality of our lives does not come down to our capability. What human beings are capable of is absolutely incredible. What people will do is rather different than what they can do. And what I'm going to challenge you to do in this program is start exercising your will, to start using what I call your personal power. Personal power to me means the ability to act, the ability to take action and produce results. And it's a power you already have. It's not something I'm going to give you. It's something hopefully will awaken within you. Two ways. One, by igniting your desire, and two, by showing you some simple, systematic strategies on how to get greater results out of yourself on a daily basis. Hey, listen, when most people think of success or failure, they think of these big, giant things. But failure is not an overnight experience, and neither is success. Failure is the result of failure to make the calls, failure to follow through, failure to say, I love you, failure to give 100%. That creates ultimate failure in life, the feelings we want to avoid at almost all costs. And yet success is also one step at a time.
It's successfully making the call. It's successfully getting yourself up and following through. It's successfully making sure you make that unique contact. It's successfully breaking through the limits that used to stop you. It's the culmination of all those little successes over a 30-day period and over a lifetime that eventually creates a life that we have total pride and joy in knowing is our own. The purpose of this 30-day program is to give you control, to show you how to absolutely tap that power within you on an ongoing basis and to make it effortless and make it a lifestyle for you. And before I go any further, I want to tell you that I have incredible respect for you and I care about you. Even though I don't know you personally and I haven't met you, I hope my caring will come through in my sincerity. And the reason I say that is I feel like you and I are kindred spirits. The reason I say that is you've picked up a program, you've made an investment, and you're now listening to it. You are 10 times further than 99% of the people that you and I are going to meet on the street. People who want their life to change, but they have no clue what it is they want, and worse, they're not willing to do anything to change it. You're at least searching. And for you to be listening to this program, it says to me that you're willing to do what it takes to succeed. So I want to do my part by giving you the skills that can really make a difference. Now, you may be asking yourself, how is this young man by the name of Tony Robbins going to help me turn my life around? Well, the answer to that question is not because I'm so brilliant. The answer is I've spent my life focusing on one primary question. What makes people do what they do? What drives human behavior? What makes that difference in human performance? And I believe that in life, power comes from concentrating your focus and taking daily action to improve something. If all you do is work on something every day and improve 1% a day, what's the difference within a year? Well, it's not 365% difference because 1% a day starts stacking on top of it. We're talking about differences way beyond anything you can imagine. What I'm trying to say is this. By making simple, small changes daily, making little bits of progress, you can absolutely transform the quality of your life. Now, what I want to share with you in this program are the skills and how to do that more quickly than you ever dreamed before, how to make it happen now, not 10 years from now. And my expertise in this area comes from the fact that I wanted to make changes in my own life. You know, I have concentrated the power of my focus on a regular basis to figure out how to make my life work. And then once I started to get my life to work the way I wanted it, meaning I started to achieve what I really wanted in my life and live the life I desired, immediately I wanted to share it with other people out of my enthusiasm. And I'm here to tell you that anything you focus on on a consistent basis, you put 100% of yourself into and you try and improve daily on, you will improve. You will get better. The problem is most of us in life do not control the power of our mental focus. In fact, most of us focus on things like, well, gosh, how come my life isn't working? How come this always happens to me? And if you focus on that enough, that's exactly what you'll experience in life. Whatever we focus on consistently, we tend to manifest in our lives. Don't you already believe that? My hallucination is you already do or you wouldn't have picked up a tape program like this. The key is getting ourselves to live by these factors. You know, most people in life major in minor things. That is, they're focused on how to make a living instead of how to design their life. They get caught up in the day-to-day -day experiences that they make real important when actually in the long term they're not important at all. These 30 days are going to be a study on the majors of life. The majors of how to take care of yourself mentally, emotionally, physically, financially. And that's what the focus is about. And since my focus has been in those areas, I've got some expertise. Listen, Michael Jackson is one of the best dancers in the world. Why? Because he was born with that talent? I don't know. I don't know if I buy that theory. I think a more accurate description would be, here's a young man who knew exactly what he wanted. And every single day... He's worked and taken action. He's used his power to try and improve on what he does. He's never a 1,000% satisfied. He loves what he does. He's proud of it, but he's always looking to improve. Do you remember Dr. J, the great basketball player? Dr. J used to have a philosophy that really affected my life. He said, you know, a lot of people look at me and they say, gosh, isn't he lucky he was born with that talent? But they didn't see all the years of practice that went into it. He said, my success comes down to one thing. I live by a philosophy. I demand more from myself than anyone else could ever expect. That's how you become a super success. Again, the challenge is, I just read a figure that's interesting. Most of us focus our power on things that don't empower us. One out of five Americans now watches Wheel of Fortune every single day. So they get a lot of power. They make a lot of distinctions on how to turn letters. But their life is not exactly where they want it to be. 
These 30 days are an opportunity for you to focus on this thing called success in all the areas of your life and to take daily action to improve. You may be wondering what drove me to want to really study success in this level of depth. In fact, a lot of people say to me, Tony, how did you become so successful? Well, I'm complimented by the statement, but my response usually is the same thing that drives all of us to succeed. One of two experiences, either inspiration or desperation. For me, it was more desperation. I grew up in an environment I did not like, and it started back as far as high school for me. I remember looking around and being dissatisfied. And by the way, if you're dissatisfied with some area of your life right now, instead of being frustrated, get excited. Because i got to tell you something, until you get dissatisfied, you won't do anything to really make your life at another level. Dissatisfaction is a gem. If you're totally satisfied, you're going to get comfortable, and then your life begins to deteriorate. But I found myself dissatisfied with my environment. I didn't like what I saw growing up. I saw my father working extremely hard as a salesman, 40 or 50 hours a week, and yet most of the time we were broke. And I didn't understand why. I can remember a specific Thanksgiving where there was no money for food and where some service organization came by and delivered food to our house. My dad didn't want to accept it, but he felt like he had to. I remember what that did to him emotionally. And that drove a lot enough pain inside of me that I thought to myself at that time, I don't want to ever have my family have to go through this, and I don't want to have to go through it myself ever again. I thought, someday I'm going to master financial success so I can not only help myself but the people around me. And that was a driving force for my success in that area. I remember going to high school, and I was not a real popular kid, but I really loved people, and I loved being around them, and I wanted everybody to like me. And a lot of people did, but I wasn't the most popular kid in school. But, you know, I thought someday I'm going to meet the most popular kid in school, and I'm going to find out what makes him so popular. He's probably one of the nicest, most warm, and genuine people you could ever meet. I remember the day I met this kid. <laughs> he treated me like I was dirt, like how dare I enter his space. And I thought, how could somebody who's this rude be this successful in having people like him? And it made me want to study what makes people like other people. I remember looking around at people in relationships, people who've been married 5, 10, 15 years, who weren't just hanging out together. They still had that passion, that drive for each other. They really loved each other 100%. It's like they were newlyweds. And I thought, how come they can last 15 years and most people can't last 15 months? I remember one day going to my mother and saying, how come this is my fourth father? I'm just curious. <laughs> and she told me an explanation that I didn't quite understand at the time. But I can tell you one thing, it motivated me to want to make relationships work. So out of all of these things, what happened for me in my mind is I said, look, I don't like the way my life is. I want to make it better. And so somewhere in my mind, I linked up that what I should do is study success. That if you want anything in life, you've got to make it a study. If you want to be successful, you've got to study it, not leave it to chance. If you want to be happy, you've got to study happiness. If you want to be wealthy, you've got to study wealth. If you want to be healthy, you've got to study health. You can't just hope that things will turn out okay. You can see what hoping does for most people. Most people don't have what they want, and they just keep hoping it'll change. The bottom line for me is I went out and started studying success like a madman. I believe that if you will immerse yourself and focus on anything, you're going to get good at it. And so I decided to get good at understanding how to make my life work. And I went out and read almost 700 books in the area of human development, everything from your basic positive thinking to your more esoteric forms of change when I thought I was so sophisticated. The point is this. As I read all this material and I listened to tapes constantly, in my car, anytime I could, I tried to dump some good stuff into my mind. I went to seminar after seminar after seminar. Many of them were lousy, but my attitude was, hey, if I go to a seminar and all I get is one idea, it's worth my attending. Or if I go to a seminar and all it does is tell me what I already know, but I hear it another time and now maybe by hearing it again, I actually now use it, what a concept, then maybe I can make my life work. And so I went for that strategy that repetition is the mother of skill. And I heard enough, and I read enough, and I watched enough, and I listened enough, and I poured so much good stuff in that you can guess, eventually, good stuff started coming back out. In fact, within a short period of time, I became totally successful. <laughs> now, we all have our own definition of success. But you can guess what mine was back then, growing up pretty poor financially. I mean, the answer was money. I figured, hey, if you make enough money, it'll solve all of life's problems. Is that true? Of course not. But if you make enough money, at least you can arrive at your problems in style. <laughs> you drive up in your limousine to handle your problem. It's a whole other world. Seriously, my point is this. I had really made it, I thought, by the time I was 19 years old. 
I went out and just used massive action. I read all these books, I listened to all this material, and I went out and just applied everything I could. In a short period of time, I had this big company. I was written up in newspapers and magazines as this young entrepreneur. They called me Wonder Boy. My ego was exploding. And I had what I thought success was at that time in my life. I had a lot of money. I was making about $10,000 a month in income, which for a 19-year-old kid, for anyone, seems like a lot of money. Seems like a lot of success. But something interesting happened. And the interesting thing that happened was I'd never had that level of success before. I'd never had that many people liking me and acknowledging me. I'd never had that much money. I'd never had that kind of experience. It was beyond my comfort zone. Now, I'm not talking about consciously now. See, consciously, I thought I wanted more and better and all these other kinds of things. But subconsciously, I believe that most of us have a subconscious idea of what we think we deserve. I mean, imagine it as if it's a thermostat attached to your brain. If we have a thermostat in this room and we set it at 68 degrees... And it's not hot enough in here. Things aren't moving. It's not warm enough. And the temperature drops down to 62 degrees. What's going to happen? The heaters kick on. All of a sudden, what happens? Anxiety. Your brain says, hey, we got to make it better than this. This isn't good enough for me. And sure enough, all of a sudden, you get this push, this drive to change things. And that's what happens in life when it's not good enough. When your life does not represent right now what you think it should be like. What's interesting, though, that most people don't realize is it happens on the other side, too. What do I mean? I mean, if you set it at 68 degrees and all of a sudden things start going really well, hey, it starts heating up in here. We start cranking. If it gets up around 72, 73 degrees, what happens in this room? The air conditioners kick on and you begin to sabotage your own success and you drop right back down to where you subconsciously think you deserve to be in your relationships and your economics and your level of acknowledgement does this make sense to you it doesn't make sense intellectually but it does make sense when you start studying how human beings behave and that's what i did i began to sabotage my own success how i started to not show up for key meetings i started to treat people harshly who didn't deserve to be treated harshly at all i started eating like I was going out of style. I was never into drugs or alcohol, but I used food like it was a drug. If I didn't like how I felt, well, I just eat something. That was going to change how I felt. But then I looked in the mirror and I was getting fatter and I felt worse, so I ate some more. (laughs) And it just didn't work. I got caught up in this vicious circle, so much so that within two and a half months, I gained 38 pounds. That is not easy to do. You have to eat tons of food and not move very much to pull that off, which I managed to do. The bottom line is this, though. As I began to sabotage, it didn't stop with me. It started to affect everyone around me. I fired almost everyone in my company. I only had about three employees left. And I'd fired them too. But every time I go there, you're fired, they go, I know, and they just keep on working. (laughs) Thinking sooner or later things would work out and I'd become sane. I went totally broke financially. And I moved into a little 400 square foot bachelor apartment in Venice, California. No kitchen, washing my dishes in the bathtub. Waking up each morning with major goals, things like, what am I going to eat today? And what's going to happen to Luke and Laura on General Hospital, (laughs) my favorite program at the time? So how do I get to be here with you? How did my life turn around? Well, the answer is, it wasn't just by more information. It wasn't just by more technology, although that made a difference. What made the big difference for me is a friend came by, someone I hadn't seen in about two years. And the reason he came by to visit me and had to track me down is he couldn't call me on the phone because my phone was disconnected. At this point, my nickname had gone from Wonder Boy in the newspapers to just Boy. (laughs) I was hiding from my creditors, trying to survive. He came to my house, and basically he put it on me. He couldn't believe how much I deteriorated, and he was a true friend. He wasn't mean, he wasn't vicious, but he was strong. And he said, look, you're worth more than the way you're living. I mean, what happened to you? You know all the stuff. You know all the books and the tapes you've read at all. Your life is still not working. And I said, that's right. And that's because none of that stuff works. Long story short, to say the least, I was jaded. I felt like I tried everything. Well, I learned something within the coming months that really changed my life. I learned that no matter what's happened in your past or how many times you tried and failed, none of that matters because this moment is a fresh new opportunity. The past does not equal the future. If you've tried lots of programs in the past and nothing's quite kicked you over the edge, all that's done is gotten you ready for this 30-day program, in my opinion. And I think you're going to find it's going to be true. Because you're going to find the technology we're going to share with you in this program is different than anything else you've heard before. It won't just be affirmations. You're going to understand how your brain really works and how to use it to get real results. Hey, listen, 
I believe your brain is the most powerful computer on the planet. Use it properly, and you can create virtually any result you want and give you almost any answer you want. But the problem is here we've got this great computer, but no one gave us an owner's manual on how to use it, and it's not user-friendly. In this program, I'm going to show you how to operate and direct your own mind with more precision and power than ever before. But here's your part, and that's what this first tape and this first day is all about. One message. The message is this. What changes your life is not learning more. What changes your life is making decisions and using your personal power and taking action. That's what the definition of power is. Look it up in the dictionary. Power, the ability to act. Hey, that's what sets people's lives apart. This man got me to take action by challenging me, and I'm returning the favor now to you. No matter how successful you are compared to your friends, compared to what you think other people are like, it's now time to take yourself to a new level to begin to enjoy more of the juice of life by demanding more from yourself than anybody else could ever expect and by using tools that are the cutting edge, the newest technology in how to create change. The science that my friend introduced me to was a science of literally how to reprogram the mind. And again, I tell you, it was different than all the stuff I'd heard. I'd done all the positive thinking and all the affirmations and all the mantras and all that stuff, but my life still wasn't working. What he really introduced me to was a technology for literally reconditioning the way my mind worked, a technology for changing the way I felt and the way I behaved forever, literally. What you're going to learn through this 30-day program is just as there have been a series of technological breakthroughs in many of the sciences, computer sciences, where we can now process information much more rapidly than we ever thought possible before, agriculture, medicine, there have also been equally great breakthroughs in the area of human technology, meaning technology and how to get ourselves to change our emotions and our behaviors with lightning-like speed. And very few people know much about these sciences. In this 30-day program, I'm going to expose you to a series of those. When my friend came and met with me, he began to expose me to just a few of them back then. And not even knowing as much as you'll know by the end of these 30 days, I changed virtually everything in my life, from my emotions to my finances, from my confidence to my physical health. How did I do it? Well, I used what I call the ultimate success formula. And here's what it is. It has four steps. If you want to create the success in your life, it always comes back to this. You can use whatever technology you want to reprogram yourself, but these are the four steps for success. Step number one, you've got to know your outcome. In any situation in life, you've got to decide right now, what do I want out of these 30 days? What do I want out of this situation in my life? The more clear you are on what you want, the more you empower your brain to come up with answers. There's an old phrase that may have been overused, but I think it's pretty accurate. It says, Clarity is power. You must get focused on what you want. And in this tape program, we have a goal-setting workshop that's going to help you to get precisely clear on what you want in your life, mentally, emotionally, socially, spiritually, intellectually, so that you have something that's the driving force behind your behavior. How can you use this first formula to make a difference in your life right now? How could just getting clear on knowing your outcome help you? Well, I believe when you know your outcome, you've empowered yourself. I mean, let's say, for example, you're in the middle of an argument. And have you ever gotten caught up in an argument where you're so caught up in it that you forgot what you were even arguing for, but you knew you had to win? <laughs> I know I've been there. See, if in the middle of that argument you were to ask the question, hey, what's my outcome in this situation? You're going to probably find out your outcome is not to argue. The outcome you want is to resolve something. When you get focused on what you really want out of a situation, you empower your brain to use its resources to produce results right now. So get into that habit. The habit of asking yourself, what's my outcome? And throughout these 30 days, I'm going to constantly ask you, how can you use this? What I just said, what's useful about that for your life? What is your outcome in applying this in your own life? It's critical to continually focus on your target, even if you're just going to buy a visit with a friend. On the way over to see a friend, ask yourself, what's my outcome? Maybe the answer is, well, just to have fun or to make my friend feel really appreciated and loved. Now, if you know that's your outcome, your chances of having more fun or making your friend feel loved go up a 1,000% versus if you just go over and hang out and wonder why you're bored. Now, I'm not saying you have to be so goal-oriented that every minute you're trying to achieve something. I'm just saying it's useful to let your brain know the direction that you're heading. And everyone I know who succeeded had to start with getting clear on exactly what they wanted. Here's step two of the ultimate success formula. By the way, step one I did. I decided what I wanted physically, financially, emotionally, in my business. I looked at everything spiritually. And once I knew, I had the first stage of my personal power. 
Step two to tapping your power is you've got to use it. That is, you've got to get yourself to take action and move towards the achievement of your goals. Now, what most people tell me is, but I don't know what to do. I don't know. I never, what if I try and it doesn't work? All I can say to you is this. If you try and it doesn't work, you got an education. You're better off than where you were before because you now know what doesn't work. And you'll probably make a distinction or two that will help you succeed even more. Most people in life have no idea what they want. But worse, a few people know what they want, but they don't do anything about it. They just sit around and hope or say, someday, honey, we'll do this. Someday is now. Someday is here. This 30 days is a chance for you to commit to absolutely turning someday into today. I remember hearing a phrase years ago that said, the road to someday leads to a town of nowhere. It's a place you don't want to end up in. So you've got to get yourself to take action. How do you do that? You decide. I hear people all the time saying, well, gosh, how do I change my life? And my answer is decide to. Make a decision right now you're not willing to settle for anything less than you can be. That you're not willing to live the way you're living right now, no matter how good it may seem, that you're going to push yourself to the next level. Demanding more from yourself than anybody else could possibly expect is true power. And all it takes is deciding. Remember, the word decision in its original Latin root means to cut off from. When you decide, you cut off from any other possibility. The biggest trap that keeps people from taking action is their fear. Their fear of failure, their fear of success, their fear of rejection, their fear of pain, their fear of the unknown. But the only way to deal with fear is face it. Look at eye to eye and take action in spite of it. I'm sure you probably have heard of some of the seminars I do in which we teach people how to break through their fears and take action. And at the end of the seminar, they get a chance to use what they've learned to overcome a major fear and literally walk through fire between 800 and 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, a lot of people think it's crazy. Go, why would you do a thing like that? Well, it's not to teach people new picnic skills, <laughs> and it's not mind over matter. Right now, you could walk through fire. I'm not encouraging you to. Make sure you hear me. But you could. It's absolutely possible. You don't need me to do it. You could also be up at 6 o'clock a.m. with total passion for living. You could also have the person of your dreams be in your life right now. You could also be earning what you're worth. You could also have more influence on your children than virtually anyone else. But few people do. It's not what we can do in life that makes the difference. It's what we will do. And we don't follow through because we don't know what we want oftentimes. And when we know, we're afraid to take action. Listen, fear can serve us. Fear isn't all bad. Say, it'll make us pay attention, as long as fear is a counselor and not a jailer. Make sure that you listen to your fear, make some more distinctions, and then get yourself to take action in spite of it. And i got to tell you, breaking through fear is like anything else. It's like a muscle. In the beginning, if you try and lift a heavy weight, boy, you might say, gosh, I can't do this. But if you start small and you build every single day for like 30 days, for example, then what's going to happen is every day you get a little stronger, and pretty soon it becomes effortless to do what used to feel like it was impossible. It's time for you to develop the muscle of making decisions quickly and easily and following through on them. Here's the third key element to the ultimate success formula. Once you know what you want and you get yourself to take action, do your actions always work? Of course not. Most people in life fail much more often than they succeed. In fact, the most successful people are the most successful people because they failed more than anybody else. I mean, think about it. Think about it in baseball. In baseball, a Hall of Famer, someone who is the best in the world at what they do in the area of baseball, they fail seven times out of ten. How would you like to have a life like that? The bottom line is to get in the Hall of Fame, they only succeed about 30% of the time. They failed more than 70% of the time. And you know what? That's how life is, too. Hey, listen, in doing this taping with you and talking to you personally, I may not sound elegant all the time because I don't care. What I want to do is get across to you. I want you to get the message in your gut. That's what matters to me. If I say something that doesn't work, I'll just move on to something else. And I ask you to try the same thing in life. Most people in life, out of their fear of failure, don't try anything at all. And that's ultimate failure. you got to get yourself to take action. you got to get yourself to follow through and... You've got to be willing to notice whether it's working or not. That's step three. Notice what you're getting from your actions. In other words, you know what you want. you got yourself to take action. Now notice, is it working? Am I getting closer to my goal or further away? Don't kid yourself or just keep taking action because after all, you worked so hard to do it this way. I might as well keep on doing it. So you don't want to get locked into tunnel vision. Remember, flexibility is power. What you've got to do, though, is know what you're getting. I mean, a standard example is, have you ever had somebody come up and talk to you? 
and they're going on and on and on. And you're trying to be very polite, and they mistake your being polite for the fact that you were interested. <laughs> now, you know, bottom line, or maybe you've been on the other side. You thought somebody was interested, but they were just being polite with you. What that says to me is you're not noticing. You're not paying attention closely enough to the results you're getting. You've got to pay close attention so that you're empowered. So if things aren't working, you can just change them, which is step four, which is if you see that what you're doing is not working, you're not getting closer to your goal, you're getting further away, instead of feeling like a failure, just change your approach. Try something else. Now you may say, Tony, well, what if that something else doesn't work? Well, guess what? Try something else. What if that doesn't work? Try something else. What if that doesn't work? Try something else. How often would you keep trying, keep changing? The answer is until you succeed. I mean, let me ask you a question. How long would you give your average baby to learn how to walk? How long would you give your average baby before you shut them off and didn't let them try anymore? <laughs> you say, what are you, crazy? My kid's going to keep trying until he or she walks. Ah, magic formula. No wonder almost everybody in the whole world walks. <laughs> but see, adults don't operate this way. Adults have learned to fear this thing called failure. So if they try something that doesn't work, they might change once or twice, but after that, they try and slowly leave and not do that anymore, not play that sport anymore, not try that anymore, because they don't want to not look good, because that would be painful. Break out of that. Grab your personal power. Be flexible. Grab the power of flexibility. So a review, real simple. Number one, get clear on what you want. And this tape program is going to help you to do that. We're going to put you through a whole workshop on that. Two, get yourself to take action. How do you do it? Decide. That's really that simple. Now, I'm going to show you some ways to make it easier to get yourself to follow through. In fact, in the next two tapes, you're going to discover what makes us really do what we do and how we can change the inner controls that direct our behavior. But you can, without any of this other information, you can just decide and make a change right now in your life. Exercise your power to act. That's called your personal power. Thirdly, know what you're getting. Again, remember, you want to develop what I call sensory acuity. Sensory acuity means you want to have acute sensitivity for the impact that your present behavior is having. Pay attention. Hey, when an aircraft takes off from the mainland to fly to Hawaii, it doesn't go straight from here to there. It's off course 95% of the time. How do they do it? Well, the people on board, first of all, know their outcome. They know where they're going. I know recently in the news there's some people that landed at the wrong airport. They obviously missed step one. <laughs> Two, once they know what it is, they fire up the engines and they take action. They get going. Three, they notice whether it's working. They have a computer on board that tells them, are they on course or off course? And they're off course most of the time. The winds and so forth make adjustments. So what do they do? They don't go, oh, my God, we're going to fail. We're not going to make it to Hawaii. No, they just simply notice what's working, notice what's not working, and they change their approach. And they keep changing back and forth to land in Hawaii on a dime. That's the ultimate success formula. That's what I did in my life, and I added one thing to it. There's a way to speed up this formula, and that way is this. Instead of just knowing what you want and taking random actions, you can use what I call role modeling to accelerate the pace of your success. What I did is I said, okay, what do I want? I'm 38 pounds overweight. I want to lose this weight. I want to be 38 pounds lighter, and I want to have more energy. I want to feel more vibrant in my life. You can tell by my energy level that I'm a real low-energy person now compared to how I was then. Seriously, I decided what I wanted. And then what I did is I said, okay, i got to take action, but what action should I take? I didn't know. I tried dieting a zillion times, and you know what? It would work. I would lose weight, and then I'd gain it right back again. And I'd lose weight and gain it back again. So what I decided to do is instead of just taking some actions and sooner or later figuring it out, I decided to use a role model. I said, let me find someone who's already getting the results that I want and let me find out what that person is doing and do the same things. That is, I believe that success leaves clues. That if people succeed, it's because they're doing certain things over and over and over again. And if we do the same kinds of things, if we plant the same kinds of seeds, we're going to reap the same kinds of rewards, regardless of our age or our background or our religion or our color or our gender. None of that matters. What matters is the law works for everyone. And if you apply it, it'll work, but you've got to know what to do. And so this 30-day program is the result of me going out and modeling people that are successful. That is, instead of reinventing the wheel and having you and I keep doing trial and error on everything, I said, hey, let me find somebody who's already getting the results, find out what they do, do the same things, get the same results, speed up time. You've got to remember, knowledge is not power. Knowledge is potential power. I mean, don't you know someone who knows what they should do with their life, knows they should change their life, knows how they can change their life, and they still don't do it? Do you know somebody like that maybe intimately? <laughs> like maybe you, for example, at times, then the bottom line is knowledge is not enough. we got to get ourselves to follow through. 
So what did I do? I found somebody who had been overweight like me, had become thin and stayed thin for years. I found out what this person did, and I did the same things. I'm going to teach you in this program what to do to do that. It wasn't just dieting. That's not enough. As a result of following through and taking the same actions, I lost 30 pounds in 30 days. I lost all 38 pounds in about seven weeks, and I haven't gone back. And the reason is I didn't just change my diet. I learned to mentally condition myself to feel differently about certain foods I was addicted to. So I no longer had a desire for them, the things that used to push me over the edge. I did the same thing in the area of relationships. I found a man who had the woman of my dreams. And I talked to him and said, hey, how did you attract this woman? And I talked to her and said, why do you like this guy? You know, why are you in a relationship with him? And I began to find out certain things he did that made that relationship work. And I started applying some of the same things. Within less than a year, I found the woman of my dreams and I married her. I decided I wanted to have kids, two or three. Well, I got three of them instantly. (laughs) I became a parent right away. How's that for creating your own reality? And I did the same thing financially. I went from a place where I had no confidence in myself emotionally, feeling depressed, to a place of total strength, and financially, I mean, a measurable change, to say the least. I was broke living in my 400-square-foot bachelor apartment. What happened? In less than 12 months, I moved to my 1,200-square-foot apartment, major progress at the time, three times bigger, to about four months later, I moved to a 10,000-square-foot castle, literally a castle built in 1925 with a big three-story turret overlooking the crashing waves of Del Mar, California. Now, I don't tell you this to impress you. I tell it to impress upon you how quickly you can make changes in your life if you learn to master this incredible computer between your ears called your brain. That's what we're going to study. We're going to study neurosciences, the sciences of success conditioning. That's what this whole program's about, and we're going to do it a little piece at a time so it's simple. If you'll do that, the culmination of the 30 days, you will find that you've gone on a mental diet that will change your life forever. If success is really this simple, if you could go from being where I was years ago, broke in every sense of the word, emotionally broke, physically broke, socially broke, and financially broke, to wealthy in all those areas, meeting my dreams, becoming a millionaire in less than 12 months, if that's really possible, if it's really as simple as using your personal power and being flexible in your approach and modeling the most successful people, if it's really that simple, how come everybody doesn't do this? That's a good question. A lot of things in life are really simple, but people don't apply them because they get caught up in day-to-day stuff like, well, you know, i got to pay my bills. They get caught up in making that living instead of designing the life. And they come to the end of their life and find out they lived only one-tenth of it. Not because they weren't intelligent, simply because they didn't get clear about what they wanted. They didn't get themselves to consistently take action and develop that decision-making, massive action muscle in their emotional body. They didn't vary their behaviors, and now they're stuck. It's not a place I think you want to be. Otherwise, you wouldn't have invested in this program, and you wouldn't be taking the time to listen now. So what I'm asking you to do is break through those fears that stop you. And, you know, the biggest one that comes up again and again, and we've already mentioned it, is failure. I want you to know that failure can be your best friend. I mean, think about it. The greatest successes in the world are people who often had so much pain from a failure that it drove them to much greater success. Did you know those little 3M stickers, for example? Those ones that you see that you can put there, I think they're called Post-it notes. You can write on them and put them on something and take it right off instantly. Do you know that was a result of a massive failure by the chemist? He was working at the time to create an adhesive that would last forever, something that you could never pry things apart with. And as a result, he came up with a stuff that didn't work at all. But he was smart enough to say, hey, what could I use this for? How could I use this supposed failure? And he turned it into a multi-million dollar business. Lee Iacocca, most people would agree, is one of the most successful role models in our country. Now, i got a question for you. How come he's so successful? Because he's a wonder kid? Well, yeah, you could say that. He worked for a company called Ford Motor Company. And he worked his way through the ranks right up to the top, worked his tail off, was driven. What really marked him? His ability to get people to take action, his personal power. He developed skill because he was willing to try almost anything. He wouldn't accept no for an answer. But you know what? He had a little run-in with a guy by the name of Ford, and he fired him, and it burned him pretty good. Now, i got a question for you. Do you think when this company named Chrysler came by and they looked like for sure there was no way they could be turned around, do you think if he hadn't been fired by Ford that he would have taken it? You might say, oh, of course he would. That's the way Lee is. Well, I don't know. According to his wife, she said at the time, he said, honey, I don't think anybody could turn this thing around. She said, boy, well, I bet Mr. Ford will be real happy to hear that. That's all it took. 
he was so angry from the pain and failure of his past, quote-unquote failure, that he was going to show him that it wasn't his failure, that Mr. Ford made the mistake. And some people now begin to wonder if that's really possibly true. When I ask people throughout the country of one of the more successful companies, I get names like AT&T and Chrysler. And when I ask for top executives, Lee Iacocca is a name that almost always comes up. Another company that's mentioned, IBM. It all started because a guy by the name of Tom Watson, who worked for a competing company called NCR, got fired by the CEO there also. He got so mad, he said, I'm going to develop a company that will dwarf yours someday. See, welcome frustration. i got to tell you, as you go through the next 30 days, you may have some points where you feel frustrated, where you feel upset, where you feel like, gosh, you know, I don't know if it's worth taking all this effort. Commit and follow through i got to tell you something. When I get frustrated, I've learned to get excited. I've learned to literally condition myself so that frustration creates excitement. You know why? Because when I'm frustrated, I know I'm about to have a breakthrough. It means my brain is searching. If I get confused about something instead of going, I'll never learn this, my response to that is, hey, I'm about to learn something. Because my brain is searching for a new answer. And if it keeps searching, it's going to come up with one. I believe the emotions that many of us consider negative, like frustration and rejection and pain, can be our greatest friends because they can drive us to success. You know what? I think one of the things that happens for a lot of people when they get successful is they get superstitious. It's like they work so hard for the success and they now finally have it, so all of a sudden they don't change. They don't vary their behavior. They kind of like want to stay the way things are. They get incredibly conservative and they miss out on the juice of life. Stay out of the trap. Listen, when people succeed, they tend to party. When they fail, they tend to ponder. Now, the pondering, many times we create our greatest successes in life. Just remember, it's impossible to fail. If you try something and it doesn't work, just try something else and learn something from what you just did. As long as you learn something, you've succeeded. Something else I want to remind you of as well, and that is sometimes people say, well, gosh, I'm going to do these exercises. I know I'm going to be better physically and emotionally and psychologically and I'll feel more confident, but I want to work on my career. I want to take my business next level. I want a business program. I want to tell you what, personal power is one of the most powerful business programs because it deals with the source of all your business just you. When you're in better shape, suddenly you negotiate more effectively. When you're in better shape, your creativity flows. When you're in better shape, you're a better manager of people. That's why if you saw the infomercial, which is how I assume you got to this program, then you saw people like, for example, Bill Farley of Farley Industries endorsing this program, saying it was one of the best business programs they ever went through. Well, that's because Bill became a billionaire before the age of 40, all by using these personal power type of techniques. That's why he's such a big endorser. And for the last 10 years, I've consulted with him using these tools. And they've got 40,000 employees at Fruit of the Loom, which is one of his companies. So I want you to know this is very business-oriented. Or a Bill Nicholson. You know, he's a turnaround expert for major corporations. You know, in the early 80s, he took on a major corporation that was losing a million dollars a day and turned it around so that within four years, it was doing more than $4 billion in revenue and the highest net returns of the history of the company. So I want you to know that these people endorse this because it works. So if you're a little bit skeptical, I understand that. But understand, changing yourself is the first place to changing your career and changing your business. It's the first place to making you a better leader. And those are the tools that are here. And you'll also find included in here some of the tools that I've modeled from General Schwarzkopf, for example. I've had the privilege now of being with Mr. Gorbachev. And as I pulled tools for them, I've included some of those tools in this program as well. Some are very simple. So what's my message here? My message is let's you and I begin a journey now, a journey into personal power where you're able to think of what you want, take action immediately, model the most successful people, Notice whether it's working and keep changing your approach until you succeed. With that kind of persistence, with that kind of commitment, nothing can stop you. I'm here to tell you from experience. My life now is so far beyond what my wildest dreams used to be. It's a joke. And the difference is not intelligence. It's not so much skill. It's a few distinctions and massive action and the ability to manage my emotions so I don't fear the failure anymore. I offer you the same opportunity. So commit for the next 30 days to at least do one tape a day. It's going to take you maybe 45 minutes and then maybe 15 minutes to do your exercise. But please, every single day. And by doing this consecutively, one day after another after another, you'll get the power of momentum working for you. And you'll begin to stack your successes one on top of another till they become habits. That's the whole purpose of this program. That's why I designed it this way is so that you develop habits that in the future take you in the direction you want to go effortlessly. So it's critical to not miss a day. So how is it set up? 
You'll work Monday through Friday where you and I are communicating together. And then Saturday and Sunday, you can listen to your subliminals. And then Monday through Friday again, all the way through to the 30-day plan. If you'll do that each day and feed your brain and your emotions and your mind and allow yourself to be challenged, 30 days from now, you'll have a sense of power and pride that's beyond what you expect right now. And I imagine that you have high expectations. So let's get to it. After every one of these tapes, I'm going to give you an exercise so you actually use your personal power. You use something you've learned. And some of the exercises will be really simple. But remember, most people fail in life because they major in minor things. Most people don't realize that the things they're making as real big are unimportant. That success is simple. But it does require certain consistent things each day. So here's your assignment today. And I want you to take this assignment and please do it. You should have in front of you what we call a success journal. For most of my adult life, I've been keeping journals. That is each day, and sometimes every other day and various times, writing down the things I've learned from books, from tapes, from going to seminars, so I could capture those things. Because I found out long ago that if all you do is hear something, within three days you'll forget 80% of it. That's why listening to something again and again is so useful. In addition, I found, though, that if you listen to something and you write down certain key elements of it, your memory retention will go up as much as 75 to 90 percent. Plus, I believe that if your life is worth living, it's worth recording. So I challenge you to really keep a journal. And we're going to have you do assignments in the journal, but you also, over these next 30 days, might write your thoughts about how you're doing each day and what you've learned, what you're excited about, what breakthroughs you're having. This is a way to record it. Otherwise, it's like your children. I know that many times people come by and say, gosh, your son has really grown. And I'm around him so much that I don't see it as much as other people do. But I take a look, I go, I guess you're right. By having journals, I can see how much I've grown, and you will be able to see how much you've grown. I can go back years ago and see what my goals were and the kinds of things I was remembering. And I also have just gems of material from people who shared with me what made the difference for their success. And I can read it again and begin to apply it. So please keep this success journal for yourself. Utilize it in any way you want. But here's how I want you to start with it. Right now, as this tape ends, I want you to do your first assignment. Really simple. Remember I told you, the way to build a muscle so that you're really strong is start small and build. So we're going to start with something really simple. I want you to think of two actions you've been putting off. Two things that you should do. Two things that you need to do, but you keep putting it off. Maybe it's a phone call or two. Maybe it's somebody uh, you've had some poor communication with and you need to clean it up, but you're not doing it. Maybe it's just going in the house and cleaning it up right now. Maybe it's some kind of report you need to do. I don't know what it is, but right now I want you to think of what are two actions you've been putting off that if you were to take them now, it would increase the quality of your life. Either simply it would just increase the quality of your self-esteem because you feel good because you actually followed through, or maybe even more powerfully, what are two decisions or two actions you could take right now that would immediately change the quality of your life. Maybe it's to stop smoking. Maybe it's to eliminate certain kinds of food. But if you were going to do something right now that was going to change your life, what are those two actions? And what I want you to do is decide. Remember, to decide means to cut off any other possibility, to resolve once and for all, this is it. There's tremendous power in that. Start with something small if you want, and then build. But right now, write down two decisions you've made and then take action on them immediately. I mean right now. I mean even before I finish talking here. Stop the tape. Pick up the phone and make that call you've been waiting for. Do not put it off another minute. If in your car, pick up your car phone. I don't care what it takes. There's power and momentum. I'm a big believer that once you set a goal, once you make a decision, you should immediately in that moment do something to start making progress towards it. That way you can't cop out later on or get caught up or lose your momentum. So please do it now. And I know not all things can be done right now, so maybe it's something you have to do tomorrow morning. But whatever you're going to do, make the decision and then commit to follow through and then check in tomorrow because this is the first step to grabbing your personal power. And remember, there's no way to fail. You might say, well, gosh, what if I do this and it doesn't work? What if I try this and it doesn't happen? Hey, what if I screw up? Then screw up big. Go for it. Do a big screw up because then you'll learn something. Hey, remember, success in life is the result of good judgment. Good judgment is usually the result of experience. Experience is usually the result of bad judgment. (laughs) So if you got some bad judgment and it doesn't work out, you'll learn something and it'll make you more successful in the future. Just go for it. Don't be afraid. Make it happen. And you may say, well, it's such a little thing to do. I'll do it later. If it's little, then do it now. (laughs) Don't put it off, okay? I'm on your side. Hey, what I'm trying to be here for you is a good coach. 
You know, I don't care how successful you are. We all need a coach. And I have lots of coaches around me. Left by ourselves, we kind of drift sometimes. Not always, but sometimes. Hey, think about it. Gravity is automatic. You don't have to work on gravity. But if you want to succeed, you've got to exert your will and take action against gravity. In the absence of light, there is darkness. So what I'm trying to be is a good coach who comes by and hands you the match that's already in your hand and says, strike this thing. Take action now. That's the power of this. So follow through on your exercise. Open right now your success journal. Write down two decisions you're going to make, two new actions you're going to take that will change your life. And then tomorrow, we'll get together again for 30 minutes. And during those 30 minutes, I'm going to show you what is the controlling force in your whole life, how to absolutely understand what makes you do what you do, and how to change it. Till then, follow through. Live today with passion. I'll see you tomorrow.